Thank the Eve of Hi, uh, hello and welcome. It's John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School. And today I'm going to probably clarify what I mean when I say I work for the Dagda. So um, stick around if you're interested in my relationship with the deity that you know, I, I refer to my relationship as work with. Um, again, thank you very much for all of you who are engaging with us, turning up with our videos hitting the like subscribes bells i i we get notifications when you know people kind of react to the videos as well and you know i i really shouldn't be invested in the responses but i, I really am grateful specifically for the comments though and um, the fact that we have such great engagement and kind of answering today's question today's response is, is an answer to one of those questions someone actually asked us um about the term work and how we use the word work when we actually refer to our relationship with our deities, both myself and Laura. Um, so I can't speak for Laura, but I will speak for myself. And that is why I'm going to talk about working for the data. So um, yeah, uh, my relationship, if you haven't seen it before, I, I posted a video earlier on about you know, how I met the Dagda and how that relationship began to develop. So in the broad sections of it all, I was aware of a, a deity presence around me. I wasn't exactly who it was um, because I had no name to put upon it. I had no description or no understanding of the energy and the essence of what was presenting itself to me um, for connection. So I was rocking along in my life. I then, you know, worked at a pagan convention or festival, Beladriaxa, and that's where I met, you know, and began to connect with a pagan community because I didn't identify as pagan up until that point. Um, from there, I had a commuter placed upon me, see the video of how I met the Morrigan, but it was after that that I began to develop this clearer understanding of this, you know, very male energy around me, but I didn't want to, I didn't, I chose not to engage, you know, my purpose of willful obliviousness is the phrase I put to it. Um, so it was a while. It was absolutely a while. And it got to the point where a Morgan priest had to be bothered by the Dagda into actually saying his name out loud in my presence. And by Morgan priest, I mean Laura. Um, for me to actually then begin to have a name, begin to have some inkling of identity that went with this presence or this energy that I was perceiving. And um, so from there, I began my quest, my quest of the question, who is the Dagda? Where is the Dagda? Why is the Dagda? Um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of how things began to develop. But after a while of my exploration, I realized that there was something, something more in that he had an intentionality towards me that I actually didn't have for myself. Um, and this is where we begin to... The relationship begins to change so not everyone will have a specific kind of connection with a deity or spirit or guardians or guide, guards or guardians i do it again guides or guardians um that will inherently res link to or revolve around some form of transactional exchange of energy or effort um in some way so when it comes to me I was just like, oh, cool. This is just information. This is just stories that I wanted to know. And then stories I began to write to help me understand it a little bit better. And then, you know, getting back into the Irish mythological cycle and, you know, reading out those stories, trying to find the Dagda in all of those stories and then, you know, try and rationalize it as well. And I've always been a storyteller. I've always been the kid who, you know, would sit, put paper in the typewriter and just like hammer away with two fingers on it. Um, Cause I've always loved it. And I've always loved the power of words and how important they actually are in how we choose to define things. So that brings us in this way to the word work. So when we talk about work, it's not just a, it's not just some kind of, oh, well, I do the odd job or I do the chores or, you know, I, I take care of like some basic kind of stuff, you know, altar offerings is not work. Um, work is a very specific agreement or arrangement I have personally made with deity. And that's why I refer to it as doing the work. Um, now, Dagda, as a deity, we know from all of the lore and all the stories is, well, he's, he's literally known as the good God because he's good at everything. You know, that's what the Dagda means. Like, you know, this 
you know, good God, goodly one. His other names are, okay, I still need to do that video on his many names. Um, or Olahar, which is this here, which is great or ample father. So this is one of my favorite t-shirts. It's from our Elon Otter merch store and it's ain't no Ahar like the all Ahar. Ahar being the Irish word for father. Um, so there is no dad like the big dad <laughs> in many ways. So um, we have them kind of clearing planes, like irrigating landscapes, changing the very nature of things. And um, we have him stopping the sun. We have him kind of, you know, pulling back land from the sea and a sea monster that had consumed this. We have him doing all of these amazing big things, not even to get to mention the, what he does for the Battle of Moitura when the Druids promised to like call up the mountain, or sorry, the sorcerers promised to call the mountains. The cupbearers promised to hide all the rivers and lakes of Ireland. The Druids then promised to have fireballs rain from the sky and to like alter the 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 biology of like the aggressors so that they weaken and um, every breath would weaken them it was kind of the curse that was put on them which is fascinating but also every breath for the two of the Danon would install would instill or raise their vigor and um, if you haven't kind of seen some of the cast martyr the battles of martyr stuff it's it's absolutely fascinating but the dag that just promises to do all of that you know all these various levels of skill all these like various professional people in all of their you know core devotions of duty towards their tribe and i just like listen everything you've promised i'll take it onto myself and i'll do that and it really does show his range of ability and the fact that no one disagrees with him no one says no no you can't do that everyone's just like yep he said like they said he's gonna do it it's done and so my relationship with the Dagda was initially just curious and trying to find out and then you know getting to know him and then building this as we say here in the Irish pagan school, this right relationship or this core equivalence. So moving towards an understanding of each other, which then helped me to understand myself a little bit better because he's a very masculine deity, but he's not an aggressive masculine deity. He's not a domineering masculine deity. Um, and he is a very caring masculine deity. So that's, again, from my experience and also other experiences of people who have found the Dagda, work with the Dagda, or gotten to know the Dagda, um, or even from the stories when we know that he is a dad and he's a foster dad as well. So I teach classes on the Dagda at the Irish Pagan School. I could talk Dagda for hours and, in fact, have talked Dagda for hours and probably will be talking Dagda for the rest of my life. But when I refer to myself as a Dagda bard, a bard is a very specific choice of word there because a bard was a storyteller. In ancient Irish society, I did a video about being a bard. All of this is kind of weaving in together, trust me. The being a bard element is functioning as memory, but then also functioning as the advocate of story and what the story actually means and how the story actually impacts and how people connect and grow through the story. Um, so... When I refer to myself as this bard, it is it is a vocation. You know, I have chosen upon myself that role and that vocation as part of an agreement with him. You know, he's taking care of someone I love very much. And that person is healthy and, you know, happy for the most part. And I'm absolutely delighted for it. Um, because of, you know, uh, well, no, that, that person's probably doing it their own self. They, they have come through a lot of stuff and they are doing it their way, which I'm delighted of. But for those of us who work in a field of faith and in belief in deity, in the powers of deity, um, you know, I, I asked for my offer, my offering to him, my agreement with him was that I would say his name. I would work for him. I would take on this vocation as a bard, as a storyteller for him, if he would take care of this person who I absolutely love very much. And so, you know, that is how the work began. And that's where the definition really comes from. So I don't just follow the Dagda. I don't just worship the Dagda. I don't just interact with him in altar space. I don't just interact with him in kind of my spiritual journey or my spiritual progress and for my own benefit or for my personal benefit. I also have taken on a vocation um, to, to do what he requires in the world which is to raise awareness of him, to say his name every day and to kind of, you know, tell people the stories and help them kind of come along the way in their own way, in their own path of getting to know the Dagda. And so there are days when it's, you know, easy. Yeah, there are days when it's not so easy. And so that's where things become very specific. 
and it is again a matter of words, a matter of definition. And um, I have a, I have work to do for him. And so even if I'm not feeling great in my energy space, even if I'm, you know, down with a migraine, or even if I have some something else going on, pressure, stresses, worries, or whatever my agreement with him still has to stand and the work I do for him still has to be done. And so that's where it's not just a, a bond or a relationship or a connection that only involves him and me. There is my service to my community and those other people I care about who I, I actually work for and I work for them through working for him. So when we talk about work and it's it's kind of similar with Laura as well again I won't speak for Laura she will kind of probably talk in her own way to answer this question but there are things that we like to do there are things that we're comfortable doing and then there's everything else that we're not you know um surprise I'm actually a bit of an introvert yeah (laughs) I just play a really good extrovert on tv or youtube um but you know my introversion aside i still got to teach a class at the end of every month you know we still got to host a live at five community sessions you know we still have things that have to be done in service to not just our tour or community but also to our deities and the agreements and the vocations that we have taken on and that is what we mean by work um so it's it's not just down to oh well i get to just be me in my own space and you know connect with my deity I, I have a, a formal arrangement, an agreement of sorts, I actually know a specific agreement, it's not even of sorts, um, to take on board the role. And, you know, it has changed over time. You know, I was, and I, I still will only refer to myself as a bard, but other people have come to me in a different manner, requiring different kind of, say, pastoral care or, you know, sacerdotal insight. Um, which are functions of priesthood. And some people have referred to me as a dag the priest. And I'm uncomfortable with the term priest because, hey, Irish, you know, we know what the Catholic Church has done fucking in Ireland and all around the rest of the world. Um, So I'm uncomfortable. I have my own difficulties with that word. Laura refers to herself as a Morrigan priest specifically to reclaim the power of that word. Um, But I'm just not there yet. But what it comes down to really is that if that's the word that fits with the person and the need of that person to work through me, then I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do whatever work is required to fulfill on what that person needs and requires. And if priest is the way that they define it, then that's the way that works for them. And for me, I will just say bard because all I ever do is tell a good story. (laughs) So... Hopefully that answers the question there, what we mean by work. Oh, also, not everyone will be expected to do work when it comes to a deity relationship. And even if a deity does ask for or does place expectations, some cases it, it it's usually and more specifically unique to that relationship that you have with the deity. Not everyone works in the same way. You know, we have a lovely kind of class done by Ian Power in our school, um, which is spilling the blood of enemies is not the only way to serve. And it talks, he's a Morgan devotee. He's a Morgan kind of, you know, he refers to himself as a Morgan priest as well, actually. Um, and, you know, it's not always about blood and battle and prophecy. You know, it's sometimes people serve in very specific and different ways. And that is going to be unique to their abilities, unique to their skill. And so when it comes to your relationship with your deity, you need to focus it initially centrally on yourself, of course, as I've mentioned in the spiritual sensibility and spiritual sensitivity but then also this concept of personal sovereignty establishing who you are within yourself so that when you move towards this relationship with deity um, that you're able to be firm on you know who you are and how you will choose to interact within that partnership as it would be um <clears throat> and not everyone's going to be the same not everyone is going to be asked to stand up and you know speak and tell the story and function as memory for like the Dagda in in a barred capacity you know other people might be expected to be hospitable hospitable people and host people in their houses or look after people in those other ways that work with him some people might be asked to offer security and kind of safety much like he did digging the trenches for wrath breast or tara at the case would be now um so there is there's a many different ways to work and to interact and it doesn't even have to be work sometimes it is just a personal relationship between you and your deity that is fulfilling for you within your own life and that 
again, would not require work. Again, what, when I say work, I don't mean offerings. I don't mean, you know, regular kind of commitments to your own relationship with you and the deity. What I'm talking about when myself and Laura usually say work, it means those things that go beyond just our own personal connection with that deity. And um, those are the responsibilities, those are the commitments that come along. So hopefully that's been a, a bit of an insight. Hopefully that has answered the question there. Um, or maybe it's caused more questions. Maybe you're like, um, well, I'd like something else clarified from that. If you have found a question from this or there's anything you'd like to talk about more, fire it down in the comments do below. I do go through and I read those comments a lot and I check in with them. And if there is a question, some other question that you think I might be able to offer some insight or some perspective on, please draw that in the comments there as well. And as ever, again, thank you very much, Guru of Milamahakas, for engaging with us, for connecting with us as community, and for turning up within this space. It's been really, really great doing this. Um, I was, I was, I was hard pushed to do this ninety-day challenge, um, but now we're into the third month. We're into March, so let's rock along and see how far we finish. So until next time, look after yourself, take care of yourself, and um, slam. Goodbye.